We're all pent. We're all ready. Uh, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Facebook, welcome. Instagram, welcome. Welcome so much. Great to have all of you here today for this uh, virtual tour. We're just going to do our thing with sending out, make sure everybody know we're here today. And I invite my guest, if you're live streaming, just press the, the mail thing on your Instagram and send it out to your friends and see if you can get them on board. It's real easy to do is just press the mail sign, the little paper airplane and go down the line and just send it to everyone. Somebody on your list um, may be interested, may be interested in being a part of what it is that we're here today doing. Welcome Facebook. Welcome Instagram. Today is Friday and this is our virtual tours. I'm going to really <coughs> keep in mind of, of the time and making sure that uh, we uh, pay close attention to the time that we don't go over on our Instagram as we have done. We know we have to condense everything uh, to less than an hour. So this is going to be probably a, a 30 minute tour. We decided today uh, for this particular tour to begin uh, showing you the archives. Many people know about the historic Lyric Theater. Many people come to the theater, but uh, many people don't know the uh, scholarship behind why the theater exists and, and the mechanism uh, that got everybody involved with the uh, preservation of many of the historic landmarks that we see uh, in Overtown as well as Miami-Dade County. And it was uh, because of the documents that uh, is stored in the repository at the Historic Lyric Theater that's in the Black Archives. Uh, just very briefly, the Black Archives started in 1977 uh, by our founder, Dr. Dorothy Jenkins Fields. She uh, made it her mission to create a repository that will house uh, the photograph and manuscripts uh, of Blacks in South Florida, the Black experience. Uh, she began collecting. She began collecting, 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 and over the years, this collection has grown uh, abundantly. And uh, this is what saved a lot of the building. It was a lot of the uh, historic uh, documents that uh, read back through identified uh, buildings of significance throughout Miami-Dade County. And so I took. I thought about this week uh, showing you the archives. I know two weeks ago we showed you the historic lyric theater. But we didn't make it to the archival floor, so we are here. We're in front of the Dr. Dorothy Jenkins Fields Archival Research uh, Wing uh, of the building. Uh, this is her wing. It was dedicated to her uh, some years ago. A picture sits as well as people who donate directly to the archives annually. Uh, I want to show you guys this right here. So just in case anybody want to uh, be a part of that and anybody uh, want to get on uh, this wall, uh, these names change out each year for people that uh, support the Black Archives directly uh, through membership. Uh, we have several ways that you can do it on several levels, several amounts uh, to have your name here. We also have an endowment wall that we have on the first floor uh, that speaks to um, becoming an endowment. Uh, that minimum on endowment wall is 5000 but the minimum here, it roughly changes. I don't know if uh, Camila Pritchett is online that she can post that. We also pinned at the bottom uh, the dollar sign vault. Uh, that's our cash app address. So if you're interested in helping support this type of programming, uh, definitely we want to make it easy for you uh, to send us every dollar count, uh, one dollar, uh, two dollars, five dollars, a million dollars, every cent count. So um, don't think it has to be uh, this big astronomical number to support this cause. Um, it could be $5 that could support this cause. So thank you so much. Uh, and thank you to my staff that has been supporting this virtual experience with this hashtag safe right home coming to you from Instagram, coming to you from Facebook. We're going to switch now uh, as we, I show you the archival wing when you get off. I uh, have my camera people in cars. They'll be managing the movement. Uh, so I'm going to take this out. I think I can just leave it there and let's come on around. Uh, I think it worked last week. So, as you come into the archival research wing, uh, you'll find yourself, I'm going a little faster, uh, the hallway that leads to the archives. 
Uh, our archivists uh, and our archival staff, they do their best to interchange a lot of these collections that we have from Oscar Thomas paintings uh, to several paintings that have been donated to the Black Archives. We interchange these, we bring them in and bring them out uh, so that we can keep them preserved, but at the same time while leaving them on display so that people, uh, when they come to visit the archives, can see uh, some things as they come. And as we transition, this is something now I need to say this to uh, many people who may, may be unaware. This is uh, something that you don't get too much as a back, the, the background tour of the archives because of the sensitive nature of the material and the preservation of making sure it stay preserved. Uh, but we wanted to do this today just to get people's understanding of what it is that we do here at the Black Archives beyond just the entertainment side, it's the educational side. Uh, the preservation of, of other artwork that you see, the Carver Hotel, uh, which uh, used to sit on um, 2nd Avenue. Uh, we're going to keep coming this way. The first place that we're going to start uh, today with is we're going to start, you know, I don't have no screen, turn it this way, Isaac, you don't have no screen. So we're going to start today uh, inside of where most researchers come, which is the reading room. We're going to start from the reading room area, the lights on. And we just want to talk about archiving uh, briefly. Right, where, where, where was when we set up? So here you are inside of the Black Archives Historic Theater, the Black Archives Reading Room. This is where most uh, researchers they come, uh, they sit down, they they um, are able to review material. Uh, we're going to start here. We have an extensive library of some one of a kind, one of a kind books in many levels. Uh, uh, we have signature sign books, uh, we, so there's a lot of information that uh, can be seen here um, inside the archives. I was looking for some books in particular, um, so uh, African American literature books, uh, civilization book, world history, inequality, so our, our library extends uh, greatly. Uh, we also wanted to show you ways that we uh, preserved material. Uh, we have flat boxes uh, that we preserve that would be located in these boxes. These are acid-free uh, boxes. Um, this particular collection is our Florida newspaper collection. We have extensive uh, newspapers. These are more recent ones. This is the Miami Times uh, acid-free paper. As you know, newspapers are very acidic. It was designed to be that way because it's a periodical, a daily periodical on some levels, weekly periodicals. Uh, but the paper that is used is designed to dissolve. That's why you see a lot of times the paper on the newspaper, if you leave it outside, uh, on outside it begin to turn brown what, like within a day. Uh, that's by, by design. So as an archives, we have to slow that process down. And, and the interesting thing about newspapers is that uh, it, it isn't the newspaper we're actually trying to uh, save. It's the information that is contained therein. So many people are, are right now, they are uh, digitizing these papers because the information is the most important thing. Uh, here at the Black Archives, we do save a lot of our newspapers because uh, I'm a nostalgic uh, director. So, um, you know, I like to see and feel a lot of the older uh, papers. So we separate the papers. Um, we, we, in some ways, we use the uh, acid-free uh, plastic to preserve the papers. So, in many instances, we use buffer paper, and we close the box to keep air as well as light from the side of it. There's other way to preserve different things. This is a tubular acid-free box that uh, we preserve different things, like uh, you can preserve maps, you can uh, preserve uh, uh, objects, uh, like we have a baseball bat uh, that we preserve, a pit rick baseball bat for those of you that are uh, watching us from Atlanta. Uh, who knows about that that situation in Atlanta? Uh, we also have uh, these are the standard size acid-free boxes that we preserve things in. This particular collection is of the, uh, Theodore Gibson. Theodore Gibson. This is one of his boxes, um, but we contain information. We, if you see how it is preserved, uh, we do a finding aid. Uh, there are several things in here from correspondences, like this particular correspondence is. Uh, from, I'm looking for the date on this one. Is there a date for this one? Um, don't have a date on this particular course money, but it looked pretty old. Let's see if I have any direct ones. Um, correspondences, uh, documents that uh, have been the preamble here. 
just a couple of things on Theodore Gibson that we have. Um, documents that stretch back date wise. This particular one, uh, oh, this is a, a, a something from a Senator. To photographs, uh, we even have his eulogy uh, here in this particular file. Uh, so it ranges on, on the information that is collected and preserved. Um, here's another one I wanted to bring out. Hmm. This particular one is LL Brooks. Uh, this is LL, we have an extensive LL Brooks collection. Um, LL Brooks was a landlord. Uh, in Overtown, he owned a lot of property. I managed a lot of property with the Bundy Collection Agency. So we have a lot of background files on L.L. Brooks, as well as photographs um, on properties. Uh, this particular one here, uh, photographs on property. This was uh, 16th Street and Northwest 5th Avenue. Uh, when they would do appraisals, they would go by and they would snap photos. This is why the Black Archives has a lot of imagery from the early uh, years is because of collections like this that uh, we receive. So one thing I, I, I want to address to anybody that may be interested in preserving uh, or should I donate? Uh, what's um, on what level I should donate? Um, how do we handle sensitive files? I want to talk to you about that. Our our trained archival staff go through uh, the collections and anything of sensitive nature. We have what we call as restricted folders or restricted files that the, uh, we do not allow uh, for the public to look at. And this is one of those boxes that we, uh, we separate information that we feel that uh, is sensitive in nature. So we turn that and we make a note that this is a restricted file. So the documents in here uh, points back to the collection it came out of, but we do not allow the public uh, to see certain things that we feel is very uh, sensitive in nature from social security numbers to uh, lawsuits and things of that nature uh, that we feel would be detrimental especially if someone is still living we do not uh, some people named and some of the documents are still living we do not uh, let the public see that information so this is how they do the research this is the room that we uh, do the research in so we want to take a moment uh, to uh, take you to the vault this the vault is um, what we do, I, I do want to point out some of the artwork here from the calendars that we have. We always try to uh, document something. We just had the, we talked about the police precinct. Um, and this is an actual photo from 1961 in front of the black police precinct that we have in our uh, archival collection of the precinct. We have some uh, Adonis uh, paintings that are up. Adonis, uh, one of his major uh, paint, uh, targets always is um, Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, this is one of his uh, Fist of Fury that he donated to the Black Archives. We have Oscar Thomas paintings throughout. Uh, this is his, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, that we have. Uh, we have some historic, uh, historic posters that kind of highlight uh, activity that happened in Overtown, uh, Miami, period. So as we enter now, this is really where we're going now is... Uh, a real restricted area somewhat. This is not open to the public. The reading room is, but we're going to go first of all uh, to the processing area where our archival staff process collections. Just want to point out, uh, this is the Friendship Garden collection, uh, part of the Friendship Garden collection where they would take pictures of their, their presidents. I'm going to say a couple of names here that might be familiar to people like Annie M. Coleman, uh, Andale Mickens. Uh, let's talk about some um, Marion Johnson that may stick out to you. Uh, Susan Robinson, Josephine Love, um, Mabel Barlow, uh, Majori Wake, and uh, Ayanna Dukes. The Friendship Garden Collection, we put this on display. Uh, we keep coming on in this area. This is a closed area. This is an area that you normally don't get to see when you talk about archival institutions. Um, uh, this is the processing room. This is where we work, where archival staff come in from digitizing equipment, uh, uh, digitizing equipment uh, to, to uh, processing tables. Uh, I'll talk to you about the plastic that is used, uh, archival uh, buffer. These are, this is archival uh, graded from Gaylord uh, plastic that we use to help preserve material. But this is where the material comes before it is processed. Uh, these are unprocessed collections. 
uh, for our uh, sorority and fraternity buffs. Uh, everybody know this this is, is a, a Alpha Phi Alpha uh, paddle that was donated. Uh, not only that, whoa, 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 came down. That's not good. Uh, live as well, uh, AKA um, paddles, and of course we can't do it without uh, my fraternity. Uh, so this definitely uh, is 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 a major thing. Delta, um, I forgot I don't know who donated this particular stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna put it back up here. Good. All right. So uh, this is just different things that we we have, material that we have, uh, records uh, that we have, still have to process. Um, so many different things. Uh, folders, file folders, collections. So. It ranges, and this is just one of the rooms that we we come in, our archives, this team come in, and they process it. Oh, uh, uh, Camila said that was donated by Susie Francis, which is her grandmother, donated by Susie Francis, that uh, that fraternal information, that those paddles there. So we're going to come this way. Um, so now we're really going to go into a closed area uh, that you normally don't get to see. So this is going to be... Uh, our secret little area here. Just want to point out to many of you that have not come to, haven't been to the archives. This is what you call an archival vault, an archival vault, uh, where the collection is kept. Uh, the the fin final collections are, are stored, uh, shelved, as you see the shelving space on both sides. This room is not as big as we need it to be because we have outgrown this room and we have created another archival storage uh, on the third floor. Uh, but when you look at the collection, you, you look at uh, how things are stored shelf by shelf when you come down, uh, as you walk each space, you have stuff from like units. Did you come around? Come on, come on over. So both of you guys can see. Good. good. Uh, things like uh, Eunice Liberty uh, personalities. Eldridge Williams was who was a, a major participant in the desegregation of Miami Dade County Public Schools. Uh, from Dr. Samuel Johnson, Judge Johnson Family Collection, and the list goes on and on from fraternities. Uh, Want to point out? Uh, I don't know if his book is in here. Want to? This is. Yeah, wow, yes, this is awesome. So, um, I'm just going to tell you an interesting story that happened uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we, it was a program happening at the Lyric Theater, and I heard a voice uh, from my office uh, in the, in the uh, lobby of the theater, and a voice sounded familiar who was talking. And, and lo and behold, uh, when I looked out from my second floor down to the first floor, it was Bobby Seals one of the co-founders of the Black Panthers, uh, Panther Party. And uh, this is the collection that we were able to do of Bobby Seals. Now, the interesting thing about Bobby Seals, because uh, I, st I studied the Panthers a lot, I was able to bring him uh, this book downstairs. When he was downstairs, I was like, wait a minute. Uh, I told him that I just found a book that was donated in a book collection. And uh, interesting enough, it had his signature in the writing uh, on that, on this particular book. And as soon as he saw the name, he knew exactly uh, who Charles Bronson was. Uh, it wasn't the movie the, uh, actor Charles Bronson, but there was a uh, Charles Bronson that he explained to me. And that was interesting. He was able to give me the background on this signature that he signed to a Charles Bronson. And he was asking, how did you get this book? Because Charles J Bronson lives in North Car Cal California. Uh, and I explained it to him that it came through a collection. He gave me the background that Charles uh, Bronson was started a, a chapter of their uh, Black Panthers in the northern part of California. And uh, this, so this book has a lot of uh, goodness to it. Um, and then also we, we he, he also signed some of his other books on the Black Panther while he was here with us. Uh, he, we got signatures on. Uh, pretty much all of his books that 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 he had that he donated to the Black Archive. So that's my uh, my uh, story on uh, on um, Bobby Seals. And just interesting in that we had this collection here, and uh, just amazing. You never know who you're running to at a Black cultural facility. Uh, like when I was in New York, I I was at uh, at the Schomburg, and I ran into Ruby D. Uh, right before she passed, I was able to get a picture with her inside of a a um, 
uh, information. Oh, I have some items from Melton Mustafa. Yes, uh, um, um, Melton Jr. Definitely, if you do have some information that you want to store here in the archive, uh, we definitely would love you to start a collection. Check the uh, administration th door, Joe. Yes, we want you to um, um, please, please uh, find a home here at the archives for uh, Melton Mustafa Sr.'s material. I uh, want to just come this way uh, just a little bit. I want to point out some of the stuff that we have that's unique that we felt uh, was good. Like things from, if you don't know about the Chapman House, was that her? Uh, Chapman House. Uh, we have some material that was in Dr. Chapman's home uh, that we, we, we preserve here. Uh, just, just giving you some background on some of the things that we, uh, we, we have here that would be of interest as far as exhibits as well. I'm um, going to see if we can squeeze just a little bit down. I might stop right there so we can look at it. I, I, I believe that um, this right here, this particular collection is very interesting. This is the Clyde Killings Billboard Collection. This is the collection that uh, Clyde Killings was a promoter that promoted uh, many shows. It was said that if Clyde can't bring in an act, Nobody could bring that act in uh, to Miami. So he was a major promoter. He was a, a prime example of a entrepreneur. Uh, you know, he, he found success in all of his businesses. Uh, I want to point this one out real quick. I always like to mess with um, people at times about the billboards, right? Uh, and I always ask anybody, do they know uh, who this guy is? Um, and, and stuff like that. But, uh, wild man, Steve, wild man, Steve, nobody, not too many people know about wild man, Steve. He was a comedian, but most importantly, wild man, Steve is the father of Steve, Dr. Steve Gallon. That's on our, uh, our, uh, school board. But yeah, wild man, Steve Gallon was a major. I would have loved to, as I go through this dip, difficult to move them. Um, I think, uh, one of our, our, uh, Alicia Melton did nina simone and uh i wanted to bring in, and i apologize uh uh alicia uh about this because i wanted to uh she asked me to bring this out for you guys for her session but i was unable to at the time Let's see if i can get this uh mm -mm. over just a little bit and down it's a little tight but i wanted you guys to kind of See if we can get you to see this Nina Simone. Let's pull it out. So this was um, the Nina Simone. Kind of, we lost signal there. Oh, well, let's bring that back. I think we've lost um, Instagram for a moment. Let's see what's happening. Okay, we're back. We're back. Is that us? Okay. So this was the Nina Simone billboard that she talked about. Uh, when Nina Simone came to Miami, the interesting thing about these billboards is that they have uh, days. Some of them don't have a date. Uh, a lot of times they have Friday, Saturday, February 8th and 9th, so it don't have the year. Uh, so that two couple of things that let you know, but most importantly, that how the year wasn't as important uh, than the date. So <laughs> February 8th, um, it, it, 9, 8th, 9th, and 10th, she was here. Also, the interesting thing about it was two dollars. Two dollars to see Nina Simone. Two fifty if you pay for it at the door. So those prices, just just one of those particular billboards. And I think this one has Porgy and Porgy and Bess and other hits. Porgy, um, another hits that she uh, was doing here in Miami. This is one of the original. We framed these billboards, but this was an original, original of the billboards. I'm gonna put this back. Just hang there for a second, fellas. So you guys can see how how tight uh, of space we have. So so your donations to the Black Archives is very important at, at Dollar Sign Vault. I want to point out, this is not an original, uh, but this is something, an exhibit that I pulled out. This is one of the pages of the incorporations uh, that designated City of Miami uh, as a city. This is just one of the uh, original. I'm going to pan this a little bit so they kind of get in the same. So yeah, one of the original documents that designated, uh, this just is a, this is a copy. Uh, this was what I did for an exhibit, but interesting thing about this, you see Bailey w w Roth. He's white, uh, Blake Shire, Roger black. So it has their name. 
Then it has their race. And all you see is down here, white, black, 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 white, black, white. Well, black, black, white, black, white, 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 black, white. And this is this is how people were identified in Miami in eighteen late 1800s. Whether you were white, whether you were black. And this is how they uh, did it. So this is uh, some of the stuff that we store. Uh, we're going to kind of just pan over just a little bit. Things, other things that we, we store. Uh, this is a... Uh, traffic light that was donated to the Black Archives made into a, uh, a podium but this is paying homage to uh, Garrett Morgan the uh, the creator of the traffic light we're gonna pin around this area just a little bit uh, uh, we have Purvis Young's here a lot of Purvis Young paintings on this side some information on um, on Exhibits on Florida Memorial University. Uh, another one I want to make sure there ain't nothing else on, stacked on top of this. Good. So another thing that is 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 very uh, near and dear is tennis rackets. Uh, here are these these historic tennis rackets. Uh, we store here. They don't make them like this anymore. So I wanted to kind of point some of this stuff out to you. Oh, another unique thing that we have that we store. I want to bring out, if you don't mind, this uh, here is, is an exhibit that was kind of built out. Um, it's very unique. This was framed for us when they first restored the Historic Lyric Theater. And one thing they found, I don't know why we keep losing signal. For wireless, what, let me see what wire. Oh, it's not on. What wireless is it on? Okay, can keep it there. Hold on a second. Just want to bring this one back up. I don't know why the wireless system is bad on this side. Um, but I'm doing good on this side. Okay. So um, we've lost Facebook just a little bit. Um, don't know why the why it's not picking up the network anymore. Hmm. So we lost Facebook. Uh, so this particular um, system here uh, was unique because they found uh, this bottle uh, under the floor of the Lyric Theater. And this bottle was from the Colonip Bottling Company. Colonip Bottling Company. Uh, this, that's what this bottle was from. Uh, and it was owned by Charles Jenkins and um, uh, Osborne Jenkins and William Sampson. This sat right on the corner of Northwest 2nd Avenue and 9th Street. It was a manufacturing company that two black men that made uh, cola nip, peach whipple, and other drinks of that nature. I want to just see briefly how could we get this back up. Let me keep it there for a second. I'm going to keep talking, trying to figure out why we lost our signal. Bring it on this side to see what, because um, so it's odd. Our Wi-Fi normally is good on this floor, but for some reason our signal is down. So we have some purpose. I want to show you just a few more things and we're going to sign off. Okay, look like we may be back. Okay, look like we're back. We're back uh, on Facebook. I uh, want to swing around this way just for a moment. I uh, want to point out um, just a couple more things, and I'm going to let you go for this evening, this uh, afternoon. Um, this right here is a, um, a historic, um, <laughs> I think it's from the Fraser family donated. I'm not sure how we acquired this doctor's uh, weight here, but this is a part of our collection. When I talk about me being nostalgic uh, in, in, in many of our ways, this particular book is one of the L.L. Brooks uh, collection books in very bad condition um, but it has a lot of articles in it so I'm working out a way if you can come close and see this uh, this is part of the LL Brooks collection I'm working out a way that we can digitize these pages uh, because I like the nostalgia of these scrapbooks that many people uh, used to make we have several large scrapbooks like this uh, that people did uh, and this is you know back then this is the way that people kept stuff but it is not the best way to keep anything. So if anybody's scrapping uh, any keepsakes at home, don't use the construction paper with the gluing the things to the paper because it really isn't good for longevity. 
so uh, definitely this is, but but this is a way that many people back then will preserve. So we have a lot of scrapbooks and we do our best to try to uh, extract the information, the content of the scrapbook. Um, I like to keep the scrapbooks because it kind of tells me a lot more more stories about what was happening back then or what to the person that uh, did the scrapbook. This is an example of one of the many scrapbooks that we have. One of our prized possessions, and I want to bring this first to you, um, that uh, this uh, is actually, when you talk about Miami, whether or not the KKK existed in Miami, a lot of people say Miami was South, but it really wasn't South, like Alabama South and Mississippi South. Miami was in the South. Uh, the KKK did exist in Miami. This particular uh, item I'm going to show you now uh, was from 1949, uh, where the KKK burned a cross uh, in Miami Shores uh, at the church, at the Catholic Church of Miami Shores, because they did not like the fact that a black rector was coming to speak to a white congregation. So I'm going to kind of let the guy squeeze in one at a time to get a good look at this. So come first, uh, so you can uh, let him come first and, and, and come first. And I'm going to try to just scan down just for a moment. You can say one for a second. Scan down for a moment if I can. Check that. I think that's somebody up front. Uh, this is a burnt cross. And I'm going to try to get in here. If I can get in here the way I can't want to. Uh, here we go. This might help us. Better part though? Okay. So this is the actual burnt cross from 1949. This is one of our prized possessions that I, I like to keep. Um, the interesting thing about this, every now and then I'll come in and I'll touch it. Because when I touch it, you can still see the soot from 1949 uh, from this cross being burnt in front of the Miami Shores um, church in Miami Shores in 1949. This is very serious. Uh, so every now and then I just, you know, I want to come in. I want to touch it. I want to uh, put my hands on it and, and put some of the soot on my hands uh, that shows uh, what we went through in Miami, well, across the United States. I uh, want to actually, actually have them back out, and I want to share the same experience with, with everybody here. Uh, what I was showing uh, the other online thing is one of our prized possessions is this burnt cross uh, that was burnt in 1949. And uh, I, I'm going to, I showed the uh, online, uh, I believe that was Facebook, the soot on my hands. Every now and then I like to come in and touch it. And, and from 1949, I want to do it again because I don't want you to think that. I did this. This was markers, and I had this stage. I actually want to. Can you hold that? Make steady. Please. Yeah. Thank you. I actually want to want you to see me touch this cross. Every now and then, I like to come in and touch it uh, because the soot still uh, is live and well on this cross burnt by the Ku Klux Klan uh, here in Miami uh, as a reminder of what our ancestors actually had to go through. Uh, that's something that people. Um, you don't see every day. Uh, you, you see in the movies the burnt cross. Um, what is the best way to preserve? Okay, I got a question on, on Facebook that on so on Instagram that's asking what is the best way to preserve. Uh, definitely, um, the best way to preserve is 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 one you have to try to slow down the uh, uh, acidity, uh, the acid, uh, the pH that's happening on documents on photographs. Um, you know, get them separated. A lot of people stack a lot of pictures together, separate those pictures in polyurethane plastic that's acid free, uh, and get them out of the light. Uh, you know, find a way this light stays off. It's on now, but it only comes on when someone is in here. And you notice the boxes we use the dark boxes to keep the light out. Uh, another question that someone asked was, Do you have an archive from Georgette Tea Room? Great Miami Gardens now, yes. That's one of my favorite collections. That's one of my favorite collections, uh, the Georgette Tea Room collection, because when I talked about those scrapbooks, um, we have, I think, two or three scrapbooks, huge scrapbooks on Georgette Campbell. I can't put my hand on it uh, right now. I don't know exactly how the archive, the archivist has the stuff on shelves. Um, but yes, it, it's several huge, um, that's what we get. If you ever see the Billie Holiday, um, picture, that's where the picture comes from, from the Georgette uh, Tea Room collection. Yes, it's extensive, and I can't wait for the data for us to, arc, uh, to digitize that collection, process it, and make that available. Uh, Jocelyn, our archivist, says the Dr. Frazier family donated 
this particular scale from the doctor's office uh, on it. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions here. So yeah, definitely. Um, thank you, Miami Gardens. Now, just want to just give a couple of shout outs before we uh, uh, depart from uh, what we're doing here today for you inside of the archives. Uh, we, we appreciate your support. We appreciate it. We, I hope that you really enjoyed this uh, this tour here that we I try to give you on the back back side of the archives and and, and just remember us. Uh, if you can't remember us now because everyone is struggling, please remember us once we come out the other side of this uh, because we are a membership organization. We operate on grants. We operate on memberships. So if you want to become a member, definitely uh, reach out to us. Uh, we have our uh, cash app at the bottom of the screen, uh, a dollar sign uh, vault that supports our BAF programming and my staff that has been continuing to work from home uh, and bring in this virtual experience to you. Um, so I want to thank you again, our board chair that's on, that's been uh, faithfully watching us, seeing the work that we're doing and supporting us. Uh, I want to thank everyone that tunes in each and every day to our Black Archives programming. Uh, I want to just say thank you so much for the support. I want to thank everyone. Just to announce tomorrow, tomorrow at two o'clock, tomorrow at two o'clock. Lady of the Harp, I'm waving hello. Hello, saying hello to some people that are responding on, so on social media. Uh, Definitely, um, I want to announce that Camila Pritchard will be having story time in color. I believe that starting time is two o'clock, a special starting time at two o'clock. Uh, if I'm if I'm right, Camila, please uh, let us know. As well, uh, she's going to have a special guest reach, reader, uh, Stitches from 103.5 will be reading her book, uh, her children's book that she has published. Um, we're, we're, we're looking to do Lyric Live. I don't know who, if you have ever attended Lyric Live, uh, but May 1st, we're going to try to do, we are going to do, I'm not going to say try, we're going to do uh, Lyric Live, Living Room Edition. Our host, Cello, and our DJ, H2, is ready. We're working on that program May 1st. We're going to try to do Lyric Live, the Living Room Edition. We want you to uh, definitely get on and, and enjoy that. That will be on our Lyric Theater MIA handle. We have another handle that's different from Bulk South Florida's Lyric Theater MIA. That's our entertainment side handle. Uh, so definitely uh, keep an eye out for that. We're going to be broadcasting and publicizing that to happen uh, next week. We also want you to come and join us each and every week as our staff from Monday through Saturday continue to bring you great programming. We hope that you're enjoying this. We hope that uh, you'll continue to support and we hope that you'll stay safe uh, uh, as we battle this COVID-19. Um, be very mindful about the things that could affect you and your family. And that's the most important thing is that you keep your families safe. So thank you again. We appreciate you. We're trying to stay under time so that we don't get shut off on uh, on Instagram. And uh, apologize, Facebook, that it, it froze at one point. Um, and I hope that uh, you stay with us. And we're going to try to work on this uh, other phone that I use for uh, for Facebook. Maybe uh, we need to make it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Pink Roses. I appreciate the well done. I definitely appreciate that. And if anybody have any questions, any questions left, uh, anything about the archives, anything I've shown you thus far, um, please uh, feel free. I want to show you one more thing. I got to show you guys this. Uh, one more thing before I let you go. One more thing before I let you go. I want to point out this right here. This is this is near and dear to me. Can I see the Purvis Young painting? Of course, of course. Uh, this is one of the Purvis Young paintings here. Uh, this is just one of the larger ones that we have uh, located here. We have several Purvis Young paintings. Um, stay there, there, see if I can uh, have the ability to pull out a smaller one. Um, oh, I think I can have a little bit stay there. I do want to pull out another. Let me turn this way now. I wanted to pull out another Purvis Young painting. This is a smaller one, uh, but we have several, several, several uh, Purvis Young, Purvis Young uh, paintings. Uh, thank you. And we also, I'm, I'm being told, I'm going to set this here. This is not what I want to show you though, but I want to put this back. And I... Let I want to show you guys uh, this. I don't know, I don't know uh, how many of you may have had uh, this in your house or seen this in your Maybe your house or your auntie's house, your great aunts, your grandmother. Uh, this is near and dear to me because this 
I uh, used to hang as a kid. I always remember this uh, hanging in my great aunt's house. If you remember the tour that I gave you guys, I showed you how my aunts were into overtown clubs and stuff like that. But this particular drawing lights up. Uh, this is the original from my aunt's house. I restored it uh, some many years ago, and I've used it in several exhibits here uh, in, 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 in the Black Archives. But this is a piece that really uh, sticks to me because of my great aunts. This is like, other than the photos, this is one of the uh, re remaining things that I have that I can remember them so many times by at those house parties when I was growing up and I was told to go into the room. Uh, why they had the house party. So, mm -hmm. with that being said, thank you, and Andrea Pelt. L, Miss Pelt, our board member. Miss Pelt is on. Great to see you, Miss Pelt. Thank, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Uh, K K is that Kaya uh, Weaver? So much for your response. I certainly appreciate it, everybody. Listen, I'm 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 uh, sometimes long winded. I want to make sure I stay within the time that is allotted to me. Join us tomorrow at 2 p.m. for Story Times of Color. If you have any kids, uh, gather them around the phone and uh, let them uh, participate in this color time, uh, uh, color, what is it? color, Story Times in Color uh, as uh, Camila Pritchett uh, hosts and advertise and read many books that are from uh, people of color. Uh, so children books of people of color. So join us. Thank you so much. We hope to see you on Saturday. We hope to see you next week. Please tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody and get them to tell somebody that we exist. Thank you so much, Mustafa on sax. We certainly appreciate it. And we look forward to getting things back to normal real soon so that we can make some great, do some more great programming here at the Black Archives with uh, Mustafa and the Mustafa Festival, Jazz Festival and things of that nature. So appreciate you. The recap will be on YouTube.